Hello and welcome to this quick presentation on overlap averaging. If we just quickly review the averaging process, we described in the other quick presentations that we've got all the vibration from the machine and the analyzer has to take a chunk of time waveform, it may be 1024 samples, 2048 samples, 4096 samples, it'll grab it, window it, create a spectrum. Grab it, window it, and create a spectrum. Grab it, window it, take a spectrum, and so on and so forth. But if you notice something, and we'll explore this with some real data in just a moment, notice that any vibration just in this area here and in this area here is being squeezed to death through the windowing process. The windowing process is necessary. You cannot turn off your window when you're doing normal vibration analysis. But it means that the vibration just here and the vibration just here is being ignored. It's being wasted. So we can take another approach to this and overlap these chunks of time, overlap them so that they do take advantage of that vibration. Now, one benefit of doing that, and let's, let's see that in action. So we take the chunk, do the window, we have to do that, grab the spectrum. Now, we take another chunk, but notice this time we've actually taken the chunk of time from here. I don't think chunk is a technical term, but it'll do. Um, you notice that the vibration that was here, that we've wasted, is now here. So when we do the averaging, uh, sorry, do the window process, this vibration that was wasted is now being used. So that vibration that may have had some told part of the story with an impact or some modulation, some beating, whatever, is now being used. So the number one good thing about overlap averaging is it does not waste the vibration. Now waste, you know, we're not talking about recycling here, we're talking about the fact that the vibration, every bit of this vibration is important. Uh, we shouldn't be throwing some of it away. Um, and just selectively taking other bits. So, when we use overlap average, in this case 50% overlap, notice they overlap each other by 50%, we end up with an average. It still reduced the noise, it's still done everything that it has to do. However, um, we haven't wasted the vibration. And another bonus is that whereas to do averaging without overlap, we used all this time, when we use overlap averaging, 50%, we save this time. This is time that you're not standing next to the machine out on your route. Um, so you means you can test the machine more quickly. As long as the vibration that we are listening to is enough vibration. So yeah, you can turn on overlap averaging, you can crank it up to a high percentage, you know, 67% or a value like that. But remember that, you know, you're getting legitimate data, but you may not be listening to the machine long enough. Now, if you look at the other quick presentations on averaging and uh, how to select the number of averages, you'll see why this is Im important to make sure you do it properly. Um, just from a time point of view, if we bring up this simulator here, it's just demonstrating that, you know, for a certain F max, the shaft will rotate a certain time. So if I choose F max of 1000 hertz and 800 lines of resolution, the shaft will rotate uh, 20 times in one time record or chunk as I was referring it to just before. Um, if we then choose 10 averages with 50% overlap, the analyzer, and you see these white bars represent this sort of the overlap times for the averages, you'll see that the machine during that time would have, um, it's 4.4 seconds, we're not talking a long time are we, um, and uh, the shaft's actually rotated 110 times. So that's plenty of time in the process to to really capture all the variation of the gears are meshing, you know, we'll, we'll catch hunting tooth frequency problems and, and all the rest of it. So, but what I can do here is if I say, okay, well, what if I've only got, you know, four averages instead? Um, you can see there's one average, two averages, three averages, four averages. Uh, we've got 50 
shaft rotations instead. Uh, it's not half, even though it went from anyway, it went from ten to four. Um, okay, but you can you can see how going from, for example, fifty percent to one hundred. It's actually zero percent overlap. You know, it's still four averages, but now it's three point two seconds of time. If I go to, for example, sixty-seven percent overlap, it's now just one and a half seconds or thereabouts. So we have saved some time at the machine, but notice that the um, the machine hasn't gone through as many revolutions as it's running. So look, just it's important to take into consideration the fact that you are taking measurement on the machine to hear all the vibration that it has to offer. You know, all of the modulation, the beating, the the compression, the explosions when there's cavitation, the turbulence, all these sources of vibration are all important. And if you drop your averages down and increase your overlap average setting, you just won't hear in as much. So visually we can look at this again as I'm doing here. This is all of the vibration coming from the machine for 30 seconds. Um, this is just the one chunk or the 2048 samples because I've got 800 line spectrum. I window it, I have that the spectrum of this and this is the final average spectrum. So it's kind of detailed but the thing I want to draw your attention to is that any vibration here, you know, it's this vibration and this vibration, is basically being squashed down by the windowing process, which is a necessary process, and being wasted. So in this instance I've got 50% overlap, so as I go from average to average, notice that this is just moving along a little bit each time. If on the other hand we had zero overlap, then as I go from average to average, notice that this block will move one whole uh, chunk each time. If I went with 67% average overlap, sorry, then you can see it just slides along a little more, a little less. But notice that to get the four averages, I've, I've not had to listen to as much vibration. You know, I just listened to that point there, whereas if I go back to 100% um, overlap, sorry, zero overlap, I always do that. And we go one, two, three, four. Now I'm listening to all this vibration to this point here. So I've listened to the machine for a lot longer. Instead of just listening to it for this bit, I'm listening to it for longer. Thing is, with most of your measurements, you're not waiting all that long. So use overlap averaging, it's a good idea, um, but make sure you've got enough averages to really be listening to the machine. It is very important. Anyway, I hope this has helped sort of illustrate what overlap averaging has done and explain the benefits, and I hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching.